Hey, how you doing? My name's Paul, and this is a training course on programming a light curtain. So what we have here is a task that our boss told us. He says, uh, hey, I, we're going to put on some light curtains on this machine. Can you get the code in the PLC for us? Um, pretty simple task, very common, typical, okay? So... Um, this is our 3D uh, machine, and we're going to just take a look at it and um, see if we can find out where they mounted the light curtains. Okay, there they are right there. So there's one of them. Let's move this booger over. And there's the emitter receiver. All right, so we know that we have our light curtains. Well, let's see how this machine functions so that we know how to op uh, write the code for its auto cycle. All right. So we got a part, our machine. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna load our parts. Yep, I can see what's going on there. We're loading our parts, all right? Parts being clamped. Okay, that's the next part. Then we, looks like we're driving our clips in. Yep, it's a clip machine. And then here at the top, we're, uh, we got another cylinder coming in. It's marking our part. And then we're unloading the parts. So it makes, it's pretty simple. So what we have is we have a machine that um, when it runs an auto cycle, we don't want anybody to step in uh, into beyond the light curtains. So, okay, we got the we got the gist of what we need, okay? All right, so now uh, we have our, let's take a look at our BOM, all right? So now we have a couple of banner 9 millimeter, 910 nine millimeter light curtain kit. All right, so we know what, what um, light curtains we're using. Looks like we're using this this particular set right here or something very similar, all right, according to our BOM. So, all right, so now let's look at our print. Okay, so some of these, I'm using a reference print from another project, and it looks like we've already got our, our light curtain circuit built for us. Uh, on the AutoCAD. That's great. That's awesome. So what's going on here is we have a, uh, a two-channel as our safety circuit, our light curtain circuit here. We also have a safety relay right here. Okay, so if the light curtain gets interrupted, we drop our power out and then we prevent power from going to um, any other part of our machine. So for example, or 505 i think if we if this is energized when that does remember this this print is in a de-energized state so these are open when this these two circuits are energized these will close permitting power to flow current to flow through the circuit so now i believe it's 505 so we go to 505 right and or I think it's 505, we're like 505, yep. All right, so we're putting a circuit in to light curtain at input 101. All right, so there's our there's our light curtain. All right, so let's go back to uh, our two, and there's our circuit. So, all right, now we've got it pretty much identified what, we, what we're working with. So... Let's see where I'm at. I started playing around with this earlier. And you know what we're going to do is we're just going to delete that. And we're going to build our light circuit, uh, our light curtain circuit together. That way you see what we're doing. So we're going to need one rung. All right. And we're going to need, yep. And we're going to have to get a couple of timers. And I'm going to just build this. And then I'll show you and tell you what and why we did what we did. But, okay, um, because I think that that's um, very important to understand what's going on and why it's going on. All right, so <clears throat> we'll just get a couple of things going on here, and we'll be able to build this up pretty quick. And, and what I want you to take away from today's workshop is that... Once you have this routine, um, this rung in particular, what 
what you should do is save this uh, rung and um, this this example and uh, hang on to it. And then when you get a light curtain that's it's very similar, what you're going to find out is you're going to be able to um, <clears throat> going to be able to just throw this rung up there with very little modifications. Okay, so there's our light curtain 101, and we're putting that there. All right, so we're going to say this is our uh, curtain block, right? And we're going to say that this is our curtain clear timer. All right, all right, then we're going to uh, curtain clear, make that our done bit. All right. Then over here, we're going to put uh, curtain blocked, uh, done bit. Okay, and you'll see why here in a minute, why we're doing it this way. Uh, we'll put uh, light curtain OK. Here, and then we'll just put this for our latch. Okay, our seal there. Okay, so uh, our seal, so Okay, for the most part, we have our circuit built, okay? Uh, what do we have? Okay, looks like I didn't up. Uh, that's because I misspelled the word curtain. Like curtain, okay. All right, let's just make sure that everything's good to go. What did I... Ah, helps if you don't misspell words. All right, okay. And I, I, I'm just doing this to demonstrate to you. All right, a few basic items. So one of the other things I like to do is I uh, edit my rung. All right, uh, another misspell. All right, so. We have our run. So essentially, 101. So if we look back in our circuit, all right, and five on page five, what we have is light curtain's okay. If that's okay, it's coming into the PLC telling us that it's okay, right? All right, so now what we have here is light curtain is okay. Our timer is done. If the curtain's not blocked, then we'll get a light curtain okay. Um, we'll write a one to this to this instruction here, and then we will seal that in. All right, down here we'll write a one here, and we'll have our circuit will be continuous, but we'll be sending a signal to our PLC that the light curtain's okay. Perfect, right? Now the 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 second that it gets blocked, we come up here and we are. Uh, our curtain gets blocked okay and we put a tiny little timer here just a tiny little one um so if it gets blocked for uh, virtually almost nothing okay we're gonna be uh okay but if it gets blocked in a, in a in a real world then this is gonna get this timer's on time out and we're going to get a uh, our light curtain's gonna drop out now what I did here is, well, I pulled up another program that's a real world, fully built already, uh, program's already built. Okay, so let's look at, do a few things here. Light curtain, okay. So what I want you to do is cross-reference this and take a look at what we've done here. So we got our main uh, program, right? So in our main program, if the machine's all okay to run, we have it, we have our light curtain, okay, um, instruction there right so if that gets blocked then that drops out and then we do we can't say that our machine's okay to run all right so let's go back and let's cross reference again so in our auto cycle so in our auto cycle auto in progress if uh, the parts aren't loaded cycle start the light curtain's not okay or we don't get our start pulse or there is a machine fault we can't go into an auto cycle okay very simple then what we can do is here's our two sensors on our on our our inputs or our uh, single input on our sensors page all right 
here and here. All right, let's go back and cross-reference. All right, then we start into all our faults. So we have a fault that shows up in rung one, two, and etc. down to 44. So if our light curtain drops out, this is what we're looking at. So we have we have our our main, the machine's okay, our auto, auto cycle. If we have these two sensors, so what we have is our clear and blocked, right? And then um, our fault conditions, all right? So a uh, light curtain fault uh, right here, and there's, there's our um, fault messaging, okay, on our fault routine. So essentially, if we go back to our cross-reference, when you build your your circuit, your routine out, then you got to consider all the different circumstances that your light curtain is going to get used in. And it, it, it's really not that complicated. You just take the time to think it through. So you got your main routine, your auto sequence, uh, your indicator, your sensors. So you got your inputs there, whether it's clear to fault. Uh, are cleared or blocked, and then uh, you'll have to, for any fault, you will want to um, add the, whether the light curtain is okay or not. So in this particular case, what we have is cylinders, left-hand cylinders, right? So as the cylinders are closing, clamping, if we have a light curtain fault, we want those cylinders to stop. And that's what's going on here, okay? So any of the cylinders that are moving, <clears throat> We make sure that they all the cylinders will stop if the light curtain is not okay. All right, so you'll notice on our project, we have a lot of cylinders, a lot of things are moving, and when that light curtain is blocked, we want to stop the machine with every cylinder to halt. Okay, so that's essentially what's going on here. So for every one of these cylinders in an output, right, uh, on the or we want to stop the output. We want to put the status as fault. All right, and a fault status. Put the machine as fault status that the light curtain's been blocked. Once that's done, obviously we'll have to go through a reset cycle <clears throat> and make sure the curtain's not blocked, and then our light curtain will be be okay. All right. So I hope I made this clear. Give you some examples of how to uh, build a light curtain status uh, program in your PLC and gave you an example of um, how it's used in the real world. Uh, we looked at a uh, AutoCAD drawing with the a typical AutoCAD uh, auto light curtain drawing with uh, safety relays. So. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. This is Paul with Logics Magazine.